Uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another tutorial that I'm doing. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to launch games over the network. Um, there is a advantage and disadvantage of doing it. The disadvantage is uh, if you install your um, and if you install a game on the local hard drive and then um, um, play it, it is a faster loading time but since we're going to be loading the game over Wi-Fi because the game is on a network location it is a bit latent and slow um, the advantages of doing this is even a guest even a guest um, account can um, play these games without installing them and do not require administrative privileges to run the game um, so that's the advantage um, I've done this mainly for if I have guests over that uh, want to aboard and can play my games while they're here and copy them if they so choose to. Um, but they can do it through the guest SMB without modifying anything. So I can just let them have f um, access to it, which they can't write, they can only read. Uh, so they can play the game over the network or they can just copy it to the computer and play it just on their local hard drive. But we're going to be just playing it through the network. Um, I'm going to be playing Halo 2 for this demonstration. Um, because that's the game I really play. That's why I set it up this way. Because um, the only demand that this um, network will be getting is when I am playing games or watching movies. Um, and if the hard drives are idle for one minute, which I've done in the firmware. Um, uh, I've set them to power down. So it saves power. So it, it, it's not a, um, it's a passive server. So it's not really as, as active as, say, for example, a internet server, web server, and stuff like that. So it's just it's just pretty much a private server, uh, just for myself. Um, I've I've explained how I've set the private server up in the past, so I won't be going through that. I'll just be going through launching Halo 2 over the network. So uh, let's go to the device I'm going to be doing it, which is a Lenovo laptop with no games installed. So Halo. Halo 2 and all that are not installed and registered with this computer so um, and I will prove this by going to the programs and features so we'll just sit down in front of it um, so we'll just wake it up the screen so what we're going to do this is Windows 8.1 we're just going to type in features Let's wait for it to load. There it is, programs and features. So it's probably hard to see, but pretty much the really the only things that are installed on this computer are drivers, um, Microsoft 365, and really no games. So it's just drivers and really basic applications. Um, and between the Intel and the Elin touchpad driver. There's no H, which Halo starts with an H. Halo 2. So I'm going to be showing you how to launch it through the network. Um, we're going to go and be going through as an admin. But I do got a guest ex, um, a Samba guest access to it, um, which just goes to my games folder. I don't need one for my entertainment because all my entertainment gets put in this DLNA server here, which is ET's DLNA server, which the movies and they get put in there for the ones that connect automatically. So anyone that's connected to this Wi-Fi network, if um, your Windows 8 and above, um, Windows 8 and Windows 10, your operating system will automatic should automatically install this DLNA server. Excuse me, I'm just having a coffee. And um, you can even install the DLNA server on the guest network. So this is not really much of a security because this is all this is doing is just grabbing all my movies and stuff. But we're going to be going to the Samba, which is this network, my, my network storage. Um, this is a Samba server, which is on a network location, which is over there. So we're going to be launching that. Right, this is my admin's login. Oh, this is my admin's access to my Samba server. Um, so, um, if you're logged in as a guest, um, you won't have access to all these partitions. The only um, guest you will have is access to the games folder as a guest. So, the games, 
once you log into the Samba server here, you, all these files here will just pop up as read only. So you can't, I can modify them, delete or whatever like that, but the guests can't do that. They can just read only. So let's, let's Halo 2. Um, this is the data files, but since it's on a network location, uh, I don't have to, because if you don't have this file here, these two files here um, on present on a disk or um, copied to the hard, local hard drive and if you move the location of these files you can um, Halo 2 will stop working so being on a network location um, I can launch this game from the network without having to worry about that because that network location will still stay the same um, if you want to install the game because you can go through the install installation, you got to copy this to a specific uh, a uh, folder, any folder on your um, hard drive. As long as no one, you want to copy it where no one will go. And then once you copy it, you click the installation file and go through for the setup process. But I've already done the setup process and actually installed it on the network. So um, this is where this folder came in. This is actually a custom folder. Um, so yeah. Um, so we're going to look for the launcher file. Usually, the, when you're when you're when you've got an application like this or a program or a game, it'll have all the data, all the resources, and all that in these folders and all the um, files it needs to run. There'll always be a launcher file, and that's the file that your shortcut on your desktop goes to each time. It's usually a launcher, which is this one. So we're going to push that. Um, as I said, um, there is going to be a little bit of a wait time. Um, but as I said, the advantages of doing this is even if this computer was logged in as a guest user, um, I could still log this into the games um, SMB. Uh, and also it can still play these games without having the administrative password. So... Um, You'll see that anyway because usually if a program, usually when you install it, it'll, it'll come up with the user account control. Um, but you will see once it does load, which it will, um, that no user account control will come up. The graphics card will just kick in and it'll just load. So yeah, that's pretty much what we're going to do. So there we go. It's starting to to load up the game um i still i still want i don't i don't mind playing it like this because really it sort of reminds me of the xbox anyway because the cd um this well the the cd uh the dvd itself um takes sort of this long to load anyway so it's uh, maybe a little shorter but um as i said you can have multiple people playing this at once um so we could have like a a local game or we can play online um, I've had an online thing with them for a while but as you see we are loading the program so everything is loading wirelessly off the hard drive so the, the hard drive is going grabbing all the files it needs to load the game so and the cool thing about games like Halo 2 and even Halo 1, which I've got on here too, is if you're um, on campaign mode, um, everyone can be at different levels because um, you don't have to, or because it saves a local, it saves a local folder on the game called my, uh, on the hard drive called My Games, and then under that is Halo or Halo 2, and it usually has your saved games there. So. If I'm like completed it on this computer and then someone else brings their computer along and launches the same, they'll be at the start and they'll have to create their own profiles and everything. So we'll just connect to online. So once the game's actually loaded, there's not much of a wait time, to be honest. It's like having the games um, locally on your drive, only when you're like loading the maps um, and all that, that you'll notice it. So we'll go to that, go to online and we'll go to custom games. See, so um, you can still play online, just like per usual. You don't have to 
um, do anything. Uh, oh well, you've got to let the game through your Windows firewall to begin with. But the game has already been, um, well, I've got DMs, I'm in the DMZ zone, so um, my internet connection gets the necessary reports forwarded to it when it needs to. Plus I've got my own firewall anyway, and that's really much locked down. Um, so no one can't get into my personal network. Plus, up, well, this pri oh, this network in here is actually, I'm, I'm actually double netting, so I've got a firewall on the router there, and that router's connected. That router is connected inside to the um, another Fritz router in there, and that's got its own firewall. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm double firewalled. So, good luck trying to get to me. So, we've got online. We'll just connect to any random game. Oh, and this game's just finished. So, we'll just wait for the host since I'm, I'm a client, or even the host of clients, but. Um, I'm actually a um, I'm not the host of this game, so we're just gonna see what the host does. And as you see, and so the only time I've noticed that this game, the only the only time is the loading time is when the worlds are loading, and then when you're coming back to the main screen. Once the world's really loaded, um, see it's gonna load the um, the world now, the map. So it's get grabbing the map off the uh, network location and putting it in the um, in whatever the computer put in the RAM to launch the game. Um, see, so it is a bit of a wait time, but at the same time, um, you know, as I said, the advantages you can share your games without having to install them, and yeah. As I said, I don't mind this wait uh, loading time because once it's actually loaded, um, it'll just yeah, it'll it'll just um, it'll go like a normal game. There's no lag. So it's loaded the world. Oh, so the person has kicked me out. So what we'll do is we'll connect to another game, just to show you. So it's just loading back the world, oh, loading back the main men oh, the menus and all that. So yeah, see on my computer, my studio computer, I've got this actually installed on the local hard drive on that. It goes way, it doesn't load as long, but we're talking about a scenario where you're wanting to share the games or, or just... Give access in one time, like um, my nephews might want to play my, my Halo 2 game, and I can just go, Well, where's your mum's computer? Let me connect your mum's computer to the guest SMB, and I'll launch the game on her computer, and you can just play it off that without installing it. Because you know, people can sometimes get a bit iffy about installed programs and slowing your computer down. Well, at least with this way the game's not installed and you don't have to worry about it. So we'll just go back into another room. Another lobby. Hopefully this person won't kick me out. So they're already in an active game. So we're just loading the map from the network again. I mean, it probably it only requires a little bit of resources from the hard drive while you're playing on the map, but not much. Probably just the sound here and there, or um, anything like that. And here we go. So the map's loaded. It's been put in the RAM. So now it's just um, setting up the game and people's positions. So now we actually are using the WAN. So, as you can see, there's not much of a lag. Um, so if we actually, like, do see, we could actually, pretty much once the world is loaded. Okay. So we'll get in the car. Oh. 
So there's not actually much of a lag. Sorry, I just can't play this game with two hands. And plus there's someone on the gun at the same time. But as you can see, the game goes pretty alright after the loading time. There might be just a little bit of demands from the resource. Uh, resource demands from your thing. Oh, and I just died. But see, it's other than that, it's actually quite fast. So there's no lag time or anything on it now. See, so if we chuck a grenade, you know, make it actually thing, shoot the guns. Sorry, my sound, my sound plays up on this, but so that's how we do it. And someone's beeping out to me to think, oh, he's put the gun. No, 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 go, bro. So, yeah, that's pretty much Halo 2 um, played over the network, not installed on the computer, no files copied to the computer, anything like that. So, um, I just thought I would do this uh, tutorial how to play games over the network. Um, just please note that doing it this way, as, as you've seen, um, has a bit of a lag time. So, um, if you are going to play, get people to play games over your network, make sure you've got games that don't require much resources to play over a Wi-Fi network like Halo or Halo 2. Um, because it really doesn't need any resources once the game is loaded. Not really just a file here and there or a, or a, or a script here and there, but um, Wi-Fi should be able to handle that um, seamlessly unless it has to load new worlds. And everything like that so I just thought I'd do that tutorial and this is a tutorial of how to play games over the network and um, share your games as well as others can play it as well so without further ado I'd like to say thank you for watching and until next time you have a good day cha